Hey, Jessica, thank you for joining me, Masters of Growth series. My, uh, my new series where I'm talking to heads of growth uh, from Australia and around the world. And, you know, um, it's great to be having this chat with you. I mean, we've known each other for some time and, um, and, and it's been exciting to kind of watch you uh, you know, thrive and, and grow, grow in your own career. And, um, and yeah, I'm excited to, ha to talk about the new role and just growth in general. Um, so first, welcome. Thanks so much. I'm excited to be here. Um, yeah, we have spent a bit of time together um, in the past and yeah, growth has definitely changed in, in the market since then. So yeah, keen to, keen to sh share the journey and kind of what I'm seeing happening at the moment. Absolutely. And um, yeah, I think I was last time we were probably caught up. I was pitching IE some business or something, and I don't know. I'm thinking that's <laughs> last time. Yeah, always there's always yeah, some, some sort of pitching. Yeah, or oh, I might have seen you at Startup Grind. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 absolutely. So not that long. Ago. Um, and yeah. and so, can you just like first, can we go through a little bit of of your background and can can you just go through how you how you how you ended up at, at Linktree? Yeah, no worries. So. Um, I started my career in PR actually, so spent a bit of time kind of understanding communications and during that time it was when um, social media was starting to rise and really become a channel that businesses saw as a tool for um, enabling business and communications and um, I naturally lent into that as, as seeing kind of growth channels emerge there um, and then went into um, tech agency land. So spent quite a bit of time there working with some big global brands, um, helping them land in Australia, like um, Slack and Braintree, um, which was really interesting to, to see how they expanded globally and adapted to different markets, which formed a lot of kind of my thinking around how growth works um, in the Australian market. Um, and that was at IE Company, um, where I headed up marketing there and grew out a team um, that worked on both the client services side and then also kind of um, uh, marketing and brand um, services for different companies. Um, I then got really deep into the startup ecosystem and found a lot of passion in like how startup businesses grow. So uh, went from there into Finch, which is a Australian fintech startup, um, VC funded. Um, and spent a couple of years there learning all about fintech and the rules and regulations in that landscape and a bunch of things that um, uh, in terms of growth tactics um, that I'm happy to chat about as we progress. And now I'm at Linktree. So um, also local um, Aussie startup success story, but um, global brand um, with um, most of our customers outside of Australia. So very interesting position to be in as the head of growth. And also girls in tech. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have a dual personality, though obviously it's all within the, <laughs> the same community, but I also am uh, MD of Girls in Tech in Australia. So um, look after a community of women um, who are passionate about connecting and engaging and inspiring the next generation of women to enter tech. Um, very, very much um, a passion for me being in tech for the last um, 12 years and, and seeing kind of how things have progressed there and we're making progress, but there's still such important work to be done in terms of diversity in the community. I want to, I want to talk about that as well. Uh, so we've got lots, lots to cover. Um, yeah. Can you talk about, um, so first, you know, well, let's start with IE if, if we can for a little bit, just, you know, as, as, Slack and, 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 you know, and Braintree, what were some of the things, were you, were you picking up some growth tactics along the way from like, you know, you know, the HQ and, 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 and how they were kind of rolling out things that, that kind of were adapted to the Australian market? How was, um, can you talk about growth, I guess, in terms of global going local, I suppose? Yeah, sure. I think um, what was really interesting with those experiences is actually how they structured the team. Um, so both of those teams were given real autonomy to be able to adapt and communicate to the market as required. I think it's always really challenging working with a global brand when you land in a new market and there's this brand legacy and kind of the association with all the, particularly like from a MarTech stack point of view, being able to have that autonomy in a local market. Um, that was really interesting to observe 
of um, being able to adjust and, and have tools specific to the Australian market so they could run faster and, um, uh, you know, cater to the needs of, of the Aussies versus the US or whichever market they're from. Um, and then outside of that, really um, sinking into the community and understanding what their users were doing in this market and what they looked like from the get-go was a really big factor in both of the successes of Slack and um, Braintree landing in Australia that I observed. And, and can you, the, the, the team is interesting, right? Because you hear like, you know, Uber with like, you know, they'd have like a, you know, uh, like a head of country kind of an ops person and then like a community, they'd kind of could yeah. take, take a city with like three, was it, was it structured kind of like, you know, in the third kind of being a community, you know, engagement, I don't know how, like, everyone's got their own little different kind of rollout model. Was it quite quite a lean lean team early on? Yeah, to start with, and I think um, customer success is such customer a key success. factor. It's the first one that you kind of put on the ground because translating all the communication styles and what the expectations are from a customer point of view to the market um, first is crucial. And then it, it, it's interesting, I think, observing how to land and then expand not necessarily putting in a head of country straight away but putting in like a market development person that knows the market has the relationships in the community to build out the infrastructure first and then bring in a head of country um, to scale that out further interesting interesting yeah i'm always just interested to hear like how you know how all these global teams just kind of you know, scale so fast and take over, like, you know, geography. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. do, yeah. yeah. And I think generally a head of sales is kind of one of the first ones as well. Um, and, and often the brands have, you know, sales and marketing um, functions within each um, market, but not necessarily the product and engineering teams. And that's an interesting one for um, a brand that I've been watching really closely. I'm sure you have um, two is Square. So they've got their whole engineering team in Melbourne. So it's a, or a fair chunk of their engineering team in Melbourne. So it's interesting kind of talking to them in the US and then also realizing that a fair chunk of their product team are on the ground in Australia. So watching how companies kind of expand and what they do in each market um, in terms of team structure. Um, yeah, yeah so that's, that's interesting, right? Because I think what you would have thought maybe Zendesk did the same thing too. They had a lot of engineers here too. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, I haven't even thought about that from like a rollout model where mm. how people decide where the, you know, to land their engine, you know, their, their engineering or their kind of dev infrastructure around the world. It's a, I've always thought about it from the marketing side of things and like these people that just kind of go in there and hustle and, <laughs> and, you know, and do the work and then kind of, and then build it out. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, you also mentioned like a community kind of engagement. Can you just talk about um, that for a little bit? Because I'm, I'm always like, um, you know, to me, that's essentially talking to the customer, right? But it's also those relationships with, um, you know, the ecosystem and, 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 and I, I think it's just a, a, like a great lever for growth regardless. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of, you know, I talk about it quite a bit in that, maybe because I got the community background, you know, as well. But I think it's like an underutilized channel sometimes in terms of growth is thinking about community. Yeah. Um, what, what were some of the advantages you've seen of these like global companies engaging with community? Yeah, it's interesting you say that. There's kind of two parts I see to community. There's the, like you said, the user community um, and understanding their needs. And then there's the wider ecosystem community that you play within that enable and expand growth. And I think um, sinking into the user community is the first step because you can understand the localized problems that need to be solved and really hearing them. And actually, um, you know, I think it's maybe like two thirds of businesses have never actually seen their customers using their product. Um, so doing that first, um, particularly when, you know, so much of a product is um, outside in a different market helps understand like the local context that needs to be adjusted and also forms the roadmap for um, what that could look like in terms of um, the yeah, 
adjusting and forming product market fit within a new emerging market. Um, and then on the community side, I mean, that's kind of your, your tribe <laughs> that are yeah. going to help you succeed. So um, I've always seen the broader ecosystem community has been crucial to success of the business at a whole, at a macro level. So um, Slack did a really great job of that in terms of expanding their partnerships, not just the global ones into the Australian market. Um, and we worked with them at IE and, and they worked with a whole range of other different partners um, across the community as well to help understand what was going on locally and then really tap into those kind of key community niches um, that would enable and expand their growth. Yeah, absolutely. And then, um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, tribe, tribe's a good word, right? And then, um, and, and uh, you know, I imagine there's going to be a lot of this with Linktree, but I'll, I'll get to, to that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but quickly, just on, on Finch, right? So another Australian success story, you, you would have been there, you know, helping, helping, uh, you know, with a significant, portion of their growth at, at, at the time can you and and you mentioned you know the um uh kind of the complications that come with like you know it's not just a typical SaaS product you've got all this kind of compliance stuff and and you know regulatory um problems can you just talk about you know um uh growth in in, in a fintech yeah, it's such an interesting space to play in. Um, and it, also there's there's kind of like multiple um, layers to it depending on what type of product you have. So we um, we had an app at Finch to, to start with and the way that you look at growth for an app is different to the way you look at growth for a website. So all your metrics and everything that you track um, are totally different. Like you've got your cost per lead and you've got your cost per sign up, and then you've got your cost per kind of lifetime value user um, and being able to map those um, properly to understand kind of what levers you can pull across the entire funnel is really important. And I think what's unique for FinTech is, um, and, and the way FinTech is shifting at the moment is finding the real problems that customers have and, and being able to solve them that sit outside of the um, infrastructure that the banks are doing. Um, and they have had such a you know monopoly of the market or an oligopoly <laughs> for so long that um, they can move, um, they move a lot slower, but they also obviously have the budgets and the backing to be able to acquire and or um, support um, other businesses in and upping their game as well. So um, the interesting thing around fintech is uh, when we were t kind of touching on being user centric and this um, customer understanding. Um, and I'm sure you would be the same if anything went wrong with your bank, but like the customer goes from zero to a hundred very fast if, if something goes wrong. Um, and being a, a fintech startup, that's a, a big challenge because you want to make sure that your infrastructure and everything is um, set and ready to go. And then on the growth side of things, how do you handle that from a customer comms point of view um, and ensuring that you retain all of your users. And, and that's a really important part um, to factor in in fintech in particular. With, with 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 that right like so couple a few questions here um so um the software stack like just from a from like a tactical level what kind of what kind of software are you using in from to try to track the metrics on for for um, mobile growth yeah there's um we use clevertap which was an incredible platform um that does both mobile marketing and kind of all, all marketing across the stack, including email and SMS. Um, and what it does is it gives you a single customer view um, of essentially as soon as they've converted all the way through into their behaviors and you can nudge based on um, uh, behavioral tendencies into different actions um, and set up journeys and automations that do that for you. So obviously being a startup, can't do everything manually. Um, the, the MarTech stack is super crucial um, where, yeah, there's other ones out there that do a really great job like Braze um, to, to that sit in a similar space. Um, yeah, I would say that probably was a key factor in the success of understanding um, what customers wanted at Finch. Yeah, I, I just love like, you know, in case I've got some, um, get some tactical learning in there too, right? <laughs> the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. There's actually a really interesting challenge there where you can like spend money on marketing and the gap in between a system and how much you spend on like paid ads or advertising, understanding that all the way through into customer behavior is very fragmented at the moment. We actually custom built an integration to be able to see how users went all the way through, um, through a platform called Branch. 
um, where we could really optimize where our spend was coming from. Um, it was awesome. We were meant to have um, her name slips my mind right now. Um, her matter. We were meant to have matter here right. for my conference. Yeah, and she heard her <laughs> back like a week before. No. Yes. Um, yeah, she was. Yeah, from branch. Um, but and then in terms of like product development, right? And uh, I'm just curious, um, you know, in the fintech, right? Is it, are you still kind of, do you have these kind of, you know, um, sessions where you're just thinking about, you know, kind of open-ended and then kind of narrow it down to shit that we can't do that because of the law and this, like, yeah. how are you? Yeah. I imagine that'd be a pain. <laughs> yeah. It's not, you kind of, um, I, I, like you, would like to think broad and creatively and we definitely started there and then you would kind of validate down and go, yep, yep. No, this can't be done. Um, but yeah, I think the it, an interesting thing there is just making sure that you're super creative and find like the right line where you can do something really interesting that's engaging um, but doesn't necessarily mean that you're obviously um, within kind of the regulations and, and sit in that way. There's some awesome things happening around the globe that um, uh, companies like Venmo have been doing that we kind of look to and how they um, did a great job of marketing in terms of um, this uh, campaign they did called the Venmo money tree where you could shake the tree in the app um, and you would um, randomly um, accrue money in your digital wallet. So things like that that um, cool. you're able to build um, and not invest too much dev time, but uh, all within your kind of own ecosystem. So there's no risk on the regulatory side. Well, yeah. Plus like gets people talking, right? It's almost like a yeah. marketing marketing app as well. Um, and then, yeah. And so that, that yeah, I, I thought, I thought as much, but it's just, you know, understanding, um, you know, I guess where you kind of push to, because if you kind of have to push to try and change laws or whatever, you're, you're, you're going to get stuck, right? Like, I mean, um, yeah. And then, and was it like, as you're scaling that team there, um, Jessica, was it, um, I think, who was I talking It was either Air Wallex or um, I was talking to, who's that? Uh, Revolut, right? And there mm -hmm. were, um, it seemed to be, you start as a startup, but then you slowly have to get that kind of expertise from the traditional banking world into the operation to just kind of handle some of the, some of the tougher, you know, compliance or regulatory. Was that kind of how the, the team had to, to scale? Well, interestingly enough, it was kind of, um, we went through a very much a product market fit journey, which is very interesting from a growth point of view on kind of understanding and making sure that the market um, has a need for the product and where Finch is now is very much in the SaaS world. So moved away from necessarily all that regulatory compliance side of things and, and very much in the space of um, helping other fintechs grow. So the regulatory right. risk has been removed. Very cool. And then um, so it started as an app, right? Mm. Yeah. And then did you, you know, I just had this conversation yesterday um, uh, this guy was ex, ex Shazam and they're working on a really cool product to help with parenting. I'm giving it a plug parental EQ. Uh, and, 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 but you know, he was, there was definitely, and I've heard it a few times where there's this kind of subconscious um, roadblock. And I, I find myself doing this as a user as well, where like you, um, the pricing models for mobile versus a SAS seem to be like, like a hurdle sometimes where we're like, Holy shit, this costs 10 bucks. Right, <laughs> a month. but like we wouldn't flip, we wouldn't bat we wouldn't bat an eyelid to pay fifty nine dollars a month on the on the SaaS product, but I guess because we're used to like you know downloading songs or getting these apps for nothing and two dollars ninety nine, mm -hmm. he's kept having a lot of problems with like you know the pricing side of things. Was was did that kind of come into play with Finch? Yeah. Um... Yes and no. I think the it's more the app world is really saturated. So it's kind of the the you play the long game there from a pricing side of things, yeah. um, and the SaaS world in terms of like we've built a really feature rich app that, that actually had a use for businesses that would help scale faster. So ended up heading down that path of being able to support businesses in, in building out their, you know, personal finance apps and things like that. Um, and Finch is now the underlying tech um, for those platforms. 
All right, well, we'll skip, we'll skip that one. Um, <laughs> we could have, talk about that. Yeah, no, well, and then, so Linktree, let's get on to the, to, to this one. Um, you know, I've met, you know, Alex a couple of times and, and um, you know, Nick and I'm trying to, um, Anthony and, and, you know, really super cool guys. Um, you know, I went to the office, uh, you know, a couple of times, and it's just like, you know, it's, it's, you know, there's the, the taco van in there or whatever. And it's just a fun, fun <laughs> place. it looks like a really fun environment. Um, You've and probably then, been there more than me. <laughs> there, yeah, yeah, there, yeah. yeah, yeah, you want the timing of it all. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, and, um, so really cool company, you know, I'm quite, I'm quite familiar with the story from interviewing, interviewing the guys and, and having them on stage and, and, you know, um, so it sounds like a really cool role, right? And then, mm -hmm. and then the growth, you know, I think it was even when we would, I would have chatted with him, say December, mm -hmm. he was sitting on two and a half million users mm -hmm. then, and then you probably double that in the first quarter of, 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 of this year or thereabouts, just insane growth, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely astronomical. We're at um, 8 million users now um, and 25,000 signups a day. So um, very much in that, <laughs> that fast paced end of, the, end of the scale of growth. So exciting place to be, but also obviously goes with um, the challenges of scale and how do you make sure you have the infrastructure in place to handle that. Absolutely. Let me just, I'm going to, oh no, hold on. I lost it for a second. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it was froze for a second. All right, good. Uh, so, can you just talk about like, um, you know, what, what drew you to, um, to Linktree and, and, and can we just go through kind of, um, yeah, why, why, you, why, you, why, you, why, you, why you wanted to, to work there and how like, and for anyone that doesn't know, just can I get the short story of, of Linktree? Yeah, sure. So I'll start with the short story and then go into why I went there. And um, yeah, Linktree is the, the trusted tech platform that connects all of your entire online ecosystem um, through into where your audience lives. And that's not just one feed. So when it started, it was a tool pre predominantly for Instagram um, and solving that link in bio problem um, of being able to link out to one place and is today enabling creators, brands and publishers to connect all of their followers um, to their products or services wherever they are. Um, everything from TikTok through into business cards through into basically wherever you would have a, a live link um, across all of your different channels. Um, and yeah, in terms of what drew me to Linktree, I mean, the, the story and, and the passion behind the founders is pretty incredible, as you, as you mentioned. And I think when Linktree was founded, we really created a, a whole new category for social media. Um, and because we were first to market in solving this challenge um, that I mentioned around um, being able to really drive traffic outside of social platforms, um, it didn't exist before. And the, the growth and the trajectory and how that's changed into actually becoming a category in and of itself and Linktree is um, being searched more than LinkedIn bio now. So we're definitely the, the category market leader um, and continuing to define that. And I saw that as a really, really exciting opportunity to continue that growth and um, expand globally, um, given our really diversified user base. Um, and that was probably the second part of what drew me in is that um, most of our users are outside of Australia, which is a different experience to, to what I'd had before Linktree. Um, so being able to grow a kind of globally distributed team and support all our users and we have users in every country around the world. So yeah, very exciting. Yeah. yeah. And all the celebrities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's an interesting one where you get a Slack notification saying, you know, um, Alicia Keys has signed up or um, I think we had Katy Perry a couple of months ago and Dua Lipa. So yeah, <laughs> a lot of fun. Yeah, in the in the interview I did with them, um, uh, the guys last year was like, yeah, new kids on the block had signed up, and everyone was pretty excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of like every day now. There's someone new and big on the platform. Um, that we have all the kind of um tech companies as well, like um Shopify and Spotify, um, and many of them um signed up during the Black Lives Matter movement in um the US, and we're using it as a tool for social activism as well. Very cool. Another subject we've got to cover because I did I did activate the button too, and it's very cool that I just want to hear this conversation that's happening internally because I think it's you know it's an important one. Um, but mm -hmm. just before that, right? Like um, if I'm you know, so now it's it's interesting now with you know Linktree, right? Where 
I mm. almost, um, um, you know, I guess I want to say social influences or whatever, but it could be anyone. But the idea that I almost don't need a website anymore. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of, you know, especially if you've got some sort of profile there, it's just, you know, this is where you find me. And it's just a matter of, you know, um, directing them wherever you need at the, at that time, as opposed to my dot com, you know, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Is that, is that something like just a, 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 a like a general trend? Yeah, it's actually a, in, as part of our product vision and our vision um, for the company is to very much help and support in this kind of democratization of being able to be present on the internet because, you know, influencers and and, and smaller businesses or creators that maybe don't have the budget for a, a large scale website or, and or don't have the time to really think about it and, and update it constantly. Um, they have access to um, Linktree and are able to create their links, kind of set and forget if they want, or they can update them regularly. Um, and, you know, we really cater to everyone on varying ends of the digital literacy scale because you've got, you know, the big brands that we were talking about who obviously have a full scale digital marketing team that can support all their efforts. But then we've got, you know, the small businesses that um, are, are wanting to be able to grow their reach first and foremost, and then being able to connect through into whether it's, you know, different revenue streams um, or um, as influencers being able to connect into different brands that they're advocating for. Yeah, but yeah, and you've got all. Well, I think you're all, you're all, you're also you keep adding a bunch of stuff too, right? Because I'm, yeah. I'm a user. I'm a yeah. user. So you've got like, obviously. So the idea that I now like, you know, from social, which cost me nothing, right? Mm -hmm. who, who knows if that changes? I don't know. Um, and then, um, and I'm just can connect you to my store, or I could just you know, um, or to my other social account, or to a landing page, like. Oh, well, not even a landing page. The point is that there's not a website potentially. It's just here to the store or here to my, you know, um, well, you know, other, there's so many free tools. And let's see, um, you know, gum, gum, gum road or something for my, my, mm. you know, for my, you know, e-commerce and I have to pay anything till I get yeah. a sale. There's just so ways, so many ways. Um, has there been any um, super interesting use cases that, that you've seen? Yeah, it's um, it's funny you say that. We have over 150 different verticals, which from a growth and marketing point of view, um, how fun is that having to create content for 150 different people? Yeah. Um, but yeah, some interesting ones we see um, and have seen growth in is in real estate. So yeah. they're adopting it to be able to have, you know, their portfolio on a page um, that they can easily share with prospective buyers um, and a similar use cases in HR having all of the job listings in one place. And it's, um, yeah, many different ways that people are kind of driving out um, engagement. And, and like you said, it's really um, where we're spending time is in, in deepening this link functionality so that it makes it easier for um, people to create that journey and that flow into wherever they're wanting to send their audience. Okay. And then let's, let's get into some of these, these questions I, I, we, we, we spoke about. Um, you have this incredible growth, right? And you have like now, you know, 150 vertical markets. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how do you, how do you prioritize like the roadmap and not kind of buy into the noise? Oh, such a, such a fun question. Um, I think the, the key thing here is really listening to our users. So we have um, ongoing constant feedback across our different tiers of the product. So we have a free and a pro version and the pro is um, $6 per month. So we listen to both those audiences on what they're looking to achieve and, and um, where they're wanting to um, enable further growth in their business and what we can do to support. So we listen to that and then we also obviously look at the market and see kind of where trends are emerging in the space. And because we are the category leader, we can define where we want the product to go um, and where we're seeing, you know, competitors um, pop up. Their product philosophy is very different to ours. Ours is very much around removing the noise, simplicity to conversion as a, as a mindset. Um, and that's how we prioritize. We make sure that we keep that consistent, but we also feed into the, the needs of, of our customers and ask them constantly um, what, what they're looking for. Interestingly enough, customization is always a big, big priority to them being able to create their own brand and different font types, different theming and things like that um, to make their link tree really stand out. 
with that, right, I mean, I, I got a bit of insight because, you know, I've met Nick and I understand the, the bolster bit. But you guys are super creative and the design is always, um, I think it, you know, was, it's been a tremendous advantage, right? That you go, that it's just, um, it all looks good as well, right? Plus it's like, um, you know, everyone, yeah. everyone, can you just comment on, on the importance, I guess, of, I guess, does design, design and has design led a, a lot of the, the, the thought process? Yeah, the Nick is like super passionate about design is, is um, a visionary in the space for sure. And um, his ethos is around um, accessibility always and, and very much around how do we cater to ease and simplicity first. Um, and that is led from the product out. So we look at the product and how simple it is and easy to use and it speaks for itself, both from a UX and a UI point of view. Um, and then that feeds out into the brand um, and how we communicate, um, which is with clarity and hopefully making it really simple um, to understand what Linktree does in the different um, applications and use cases as well. And the, and like, and, and then, okay. And then just sw switching gears to your own mm -hmm. role, right? And mm -hmm. I just know that, you know, we, we had to, uh, we had to postpone the meeting because you, you're hiring I mean, you're hiring like crazy as well, right? How are you, how are you juggling all the, um, um, well, you've got product, then you've got, you know, the scaling of your team. How do you kind of, if I'm, I guess, I guess I'm asking for advice, right? In that somebody's in, um, they're not going to be in the same position because you're the fastest, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? Like how, how do you yeah. kind of juggle all the, all the demands you're facing right now? Yeah, there's just so many trade-offs that you need to need to balance. And I think ruthless prioritization is the key challenge of any growing business. Um, you could do everything <laughs> if you wanted to. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's where we start. And I think um, being able to really time box your day. So any meetings that you have um, are not about kind of discussions or are not long winded. They're very much around um, decision-making and um, tactical focuses. Uh, I think, think that that balance along with onboarding new team members is is how we kind of or how I'm breaking down my time to make sure everything can get done so we spend a lot of um we've been really thinking about tactically how we do that a bit more through using our um communication tools so slack for example we now loom presentations to listen to versus necessarily having to meet up face to face to do it and then our catch-ups are very much about the decisions and any kind of discussion points that we want to um, raised there and um, I think we're just getting smart with our time and then that's on one side and then on the other side it's prioritizing the right things so um, looking at the market and seeing where things are going and you know there's lots of things happening within Instagram releasing shops and a whole range of other trends that are happening in the market and we're very much looking at those and going how do we support our creators and and um, in developing these types of tools and systems that they can use as well and um, you know TikTok and the rise of TikTok and how do we show our, our um, customers and users how they can grow their um, audience on TikTok through using Linktree um, and looking at, yeah, very much where the trends are occurring. Loom, how good's Loom? So good. Yeah. <laughs> the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do the same thing. It's just like, that's how I update bosses and stuff. Um, yeah, because yeah. I don't have to waste everyone's half an hour to try and get them lined up. It's just like, you look at this for two minutes when you get a chance, right? It's like, hey, yeah. secret. That's the word. Um, and and then and then in terms of like you know people, right? Is yeah. it is there just is it is there just an obvious demand, or it's just like we're growing so fast? You know, I just keep putting on good people. How do you kind of strategize? You know, create a strategy around you know your um, human capital. <laughs> you know, what do you, how do you you know however you define it? Yeah, all the people. Um, yeah, and I think this was a, a real um, exciting point for me around joining Linktree, which is scaling a global team. And um, we, we're we very much led by the market in terms of our hiring. So seeing astronomical growth in Brazil and Indonesia. And so through looking at where we're seeing the growth, then we kind of expand out the team as, as a result of that. I've built out, you know, a hiring plan, but as things adapt and change by looking at our data, we then kind of make decisions based on that and um, where we need to um, uh, lean in on the support side of things. But um, we're very much scaling out the team 
in the US, um, making sure we have enough people in that time zone and, and to be able to talk to um, our growing user base over there as well. Um, but yeah, looking at kind of the infrastructure for the growth team uh, and then kind of what that looks like at, at over the next couple of years to make sure we're laying the frameworks and the groundwork now so we're ready for that you know larger scale team as we grow and you said that so obviously so you got the geographical bit right um that kind of comes through on the data brazil is exploding i need some people in brazil that are good whatever and then you kind of also have uh you know juggling the support that you need locally mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're, we're structuring it at the moment. So um, it'll be kind of HQ is within Australia and then these kind of coming full circle to where we started the conversation, the country enablement teams and how they yeah. build out the infrastructure on the ground and very much starting with growth as the forefront of how um, market entries occur. So um, our country manager for Brazil um, is Gab, he's in my team and we spent a lot of time building out the roadmap for what Brazil looks like. Um, and the next one is um, Indonesia, which um, we're hiring for at the moment, actually. Big market. Yeah, it is. There's some inter really interesting trends happening there um, on Link Trade. I think we have um, over a million links to Shopee, um, which wow. is a huge e platform um, over there. And then how do you, um, another one, like, I, you know, I know just for the, you know, because of the product and, and all that, you know, you mentioned TikTok, you mentioned Shopify. How is it, um, you've also got the issue of, um, um, well, the growth with the partners, right? Is that, is that, is that a separate, is that a, um, how do you manage all the partnerships and the potential partnerships? Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, um, we actually just brought on a um, strategic partnerships director um, who is, um, yeah, very much taking on this remit. And um, the last six months, we've just seen such strong inbound growth from partnership leads and, and people wanting to work with us. And so we're, we're very much taking the time to think through kind of what that looks like and, and um, how partnerships work for us because we've been so focused on the product and the product scaling. Now we're ready to look to the rest of the market and say, how do we work together? What does that look like to mutually grow? Um, and looking across all different types of companies, obviously the key ones um, that are interesting to us are the, are the ecosystem players. So um, the social platforms themselves, but then also adjacent um, products and services like the MailChimps of the world who we integrate with um, and, you know, share customers. Um, so really finding where the overlaps are and prioritizing that way. Yeah, it's tricky, right? Because you've also got, if you put these big partnerships together, that could be another massive spike. Yeah. It's kind of Definitely. like you have to be prepared for. Look, I, I'm mindful of your time. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Send me the cheeky message as a first. I love it. <laughs> 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 no, no, it was good. It was good. I, I haven't had anyone like do, do, do that. It's fantastic. Um, so, look, thank you for your time. Um, you know, it's really exciting to see, you know, how well you're doing, how well Linktree is doing. We didn't even get into the, you know, the social activism, girls in tech. Okay. Um, no, so, <laughs> I yeah. feel like we've covered a lot of ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need to do part two. We need to do part two. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> You know, um, but thank you very much. And um, thanks for taking the time to talk about growth from, with Linktree today, Jessica. Thank you. No worries. Thanks so much for having me. It's been a pleasure.